Okay. So, some of you were here for my last TED Talk. Uh, a very important discussion on how Scourge is beyond, actually. And now I'm here to deliver the much-anticipated sequel. Uh, is Alva the last to die? A mildly convincing presentation that, yeah, she is probably the last to die. So, let's establish a few things, obviously. Uh, the first and foremost is I'm running out of video ideas, so I need to post something on YouTube. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to create a video. <laughs> uh, number two, there is actually some really compelling evidence that they are indeed the same person, with some caveats, and we will get to that. And, of course, the only thing you really need to know is that I was right about Scourge being beyond, so you should definitely listen to me. Um, it was just recently, in fact, in Lake of Calandra that they changed Beyond to be Scourge, and therefore I am very, very smart and always right. So with that in mind, let's continue. Just to reaffirm my previous point, here is where they say that Beyond has been updated with monsters from Scourge. And there you can see uh, my very good reasoning that I am a genius and also a tweet in which I... All the way back, that says October 6th, that was a year ago. <laughs> so, so smart. Very, very good at guessing things. And therefore, you should just keep that, just keep that in mind as we go through this. Yes, other people have gathered evidence that I'm using for it, but what really glues this theory together is that I'm saying it. It's I'm saying it now, um, and that makes it more right than it was previously. So, who is Alva? Who is this, who's this little scoundrel up here? So her name is Alva Valai. I will say, uh, I heard Chris Wilson say Alva Valai, and that kind of rhymes with the last to die. Valai? La die. You know, maybe that's something there. Alva is an anagram for Vol, so maybe that's not even her real name. We don't know. She is an adventuring treasure hunter. She got into the Theopolis Reliquarians, basically official Oriath and treasure hunters with her daddy's help. Um, and on one of her adventures, she found this manual of blood thaumaturgy and kept it secret from the Templars. Now, this is important for a couple reasons. Uh, Alva is smart to not trust the Templars, but more importantly is that she just found this manual of blood thaumaturgy, so it's not necessarily something that she knew about or that was passed down in her family or anything like that, and that'll come into play later when we're talking about The Last to Die. But, you know, she does find this manual, and because she has some Val blood in her, she can use these ancient waystones and travel to the past, to the temple. Um, and so what she does is she actually uses her own blood, in addition to the blood of others, uh, and she's using the blood of others primarily to keep the portal open. She opens the portal with her blood. More murder equals more portal time for once the portal's already open. And of course, she's a jewelry-loving, sassy little scoundrel. <laughs> a college lecture, I would absolutely be a great professor. But for now, I am just Dr. Noodle. Maybe someday I'll graduate to professor. So what an incursion is, you know? What What's the whole league surrounding Alva? Alva, I don't know. So as I said, she's using her own blood and the waystones that you can see here, this fancy little doodad thingy, and using more blood from others, she can keep the portal open. We find the temple, but Val corruption has tangled time and space. So after each time we complete a temple, Basically, we just get to go back and rebuild, screw it all up again. 
Um, there is some hints in some dialogue that maybe, like, people are becoming aware of the fact that we're going back and just goofing with stuff, but it's not super clear. We might just be continuously messing from uh, the same point in time. And it's also not clear if Alva can go to different points in time or if this is just her favorite because of all the stuff that she can steal. So the temple of Atzawadl was built during or near the end of Atsiri's reign. Um, and the reason for it being built is unknown. Lots of people have different opinions that it was a place of great, terrible darkness and evil and whatever, blah, blah, blah. Or that it's a treasure hoard, you know, more like a like Egyptian temple where they're just keeping lots of shiny stuff. Um, but maybe the reason that people don't know what the purpose of the Temple of Atsawatl is, Atsawatl is, is because we keep going back and goofing it up. We keep changing what the temple is supposed to do because we're the ones who are deciding. So that sort of creates a nice, um, you know, it, it creates a loop that actually makes sense of the temple's state before we find it. We've always gone back and goofed with it, theoretically. She does say that the blood spell that she performs to open up the portal is fickle and that it has to be done at certain times or locations, which could just be a game mechanic thing, like why does Alva only show up sometimes? Um, especially in when it's not just Incursion League. But she does say that it's not a guaranteed thing. So who is the last to die. This person, who some people initially thought might have been a dude, is definitely a lady, washes up on Rayclass Beach, gives us this sussy little nickname of the last to die, very edgelord, very cool, gives us a device to implant to use our blood, and we're like, cool mate, thanks, because <laughs> that's just how we are. So she gives us the blood crucible, and later on she gives us the uh, viscera cauldron, I believe. And we're just, we're just putting them in, just slamming them in, taking them right in. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> she comes from another dimension of Ray class. Now that is very important to this theory and just understanding things. So remember, different dimension of Ray class, not our dimension. Therefore, she's not a person that exists on our Ray class, as in she's not an older version of them from our timeline. She is from a whole different version of Ray class where different, different stuff happened. And she's trying to escape the Scourge and stop it from coming to other places because as her edgy nickname tells us, she was the last person from her Ray class to survive the last survivor, the last to die, etc. So she tells us about the Scourge coming to our Ray class, and uh, after we've proved ourselves, she gives us that Viscera Cauldron to also inject implant for good measure. Because that's fun. Am I a wizard? Yes. <laughs> also a doctor. What is Scourge? Scourge is the new beyond. I already told you that. I was very right, and you should listen to everything I say. The Scourge have already killed everyone from Last to Die's dimension of Rayclast. Uh, they hunger for flesh, that's their primary drive, but they do seem capable of thought. Now, interestingly, we get the Blood Crucible from the Last to Die, and we implant that, and basically, I don't know if it uses our blood or if it uses the last to die's blood. It's sort of implied... I just hit my keyboard. <laughs> it's sort of implied that it's got to be using her blood because of the bloodlines thing that we'll get to later. But for Shurzies, it's powered on the blood of others. We do a lot of murder to keep this thing going, you know? That's, that's sort of... It's a common Vol blood thing. But this blood crucible that we inject into our bones to use the blood magic is a pact between chaos and the bloodlines of the high priests of the Vol. But again, somehow we can use the crucible even though we're probably not part of the bloodline of the high priests of the Vol. I mean, 
I don't know my history and backstory, but I didn't hear nothing about that. So either she has already put a bunch of blood in it, or that's not necessarily a requirement. It's just, you know, you don't have to have that type of blood. You just have to be trusted by someone who has had it passed down to them. Maybe other people can use it. It's not necessarily the quality of the blood of the user, but it's just a magic too powerful to have been passed down to randos, right? They're like, keep this between chaos and the Vol priests, okay? I don't know exactly what the story is there because obviously uh, it, it disappeared. It's gone. Scourge is still beyond, but uh, Last to Die is gone. Anyway, she says that if we don't feed the Crucible blood of others, it will nom on our tasty, delicious blood. So we continue doing what we do and we murder heckin' good. So let's compare Alva and The Last to Die and we're first gonna look at the pros because I think there's some really compelling things here. Obviously they're both Vol. Um, they very interestingly, and this is one of the things that was pointed out on Reddit, are voiced by the same voice actress and uh, it's my understanding she only has credit on her page for Alva, but GGG confirmed that it's the same voice actress when they were talking about Scourge lore and, you know, they mentioned something along the lines of, um, we were in a pinch because the pandemic just started happening and we needed to find a voice actress and this person we worked with before came in. So same voice actress. That's, that's pretty compelling, right? Both using Vol Blood Magic, uh, all of us for time travel, L uh, LTD. Let's just, let's just shorten it, last to die. That's a lot of words. It's like three whole words for a name. Anyway, she dimension travels. More blood is either portal opening longer or more scourge monsters to kill. Now here is probably the most compelling evidence. And again, this was found on Reddit, but because I'm saying it, it's now you know, even more compelling than it was when it was brought to Reddit's attention. They have the same scarf the same rapier and the same hair. So like same, I mean, the level of in uh, intention has to be there because otherwise they would just be reusing the same model, but they added other things like the cape hood thing that LTD wears. So yeah, same scarf, same rapier and hair. And then just sort of a little aside, you know, Alva is very funny and lighthearted. Last to die still makes some kind of jokey jokes. So here's just a little kind of pointing out some of the jokes that they say, not super necessary to go over, but just saying like, you know, Alva jokes about wanting to find treasure all the time. Like, so Jun's people snuck about history, stashing powerful artifacts. Do you know where the artifacts are? Hee <laughs> hee. Or, even less to die saying, uh, I would never ask a rabbit how it, or I wouldn't have much to say to a rabbit if I was starving. I cannot read, apparently. Uh, but that is my job. <laughs> and then she also says, uh, last to die also says, the viscera cauldron holds still, I can implant it inside you. Never mind the pain, it's making room. Unrelated fact, a person can live a normal life with just one kidney. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. That's, that's a little bit of dry humor, you know? Also, um, I wonder if we're still missing a kidney after that league or if that's retcon too. So here we go. The big visual comparisons. Look at... Look at this. Look at this scarf. Huh? Look at this scarf. Okay? And then look at... I don't know if you can see it that well, but look at... I'm pointing on my screen. You guys can't see it. Look at Last to Die's scarf here. You can kind of see it here too. Little tiny. It's kind of tucked in or it's tinier. Hmm? And then look at this rapier, the sword. It's got the thingy that goes up and then thingy that goes down. Thingy that goes up, thingy that goes down. That's what that called, a hilt? What that called? Who that, who that is called? 
And then if you look at the hairstyle, short black wavy hair, and you can see in this up close, short black wavy hair that goes about to shoulder length. That's pretty freaking weird if that's not intentional. Uh, I am just going to say hi to everybody. Hi. I'm in the middle of recording, so I'm not going to say hi, but hi, I see you. <laughs> well, I did say hi. So, if that's just complete coincidence that, you know, it's the same voice actress, same sword, same hairstyle, same scarf, that's pretty weird and borderline, you know, th there's not too many people that look that similar in Path of Exile. You might say like, uh, you can't see that much detail when you're that far out because you're zoomed out because you want to see all the map, but it's, it's a lot of details to be adding that are similar, particularly the sword, because that is so specific. They have so many models of swords that they could have used. However, this would not be a fair TED talk if we did not talk about the reasons that they might not be the same person. Now, trust me, they probably are, but there are some things to consider. Alva never mentions any specific Vol ancestry. Um, remember when I mentioned that her father is not the person who gave her this Vol blood magic, she just happened to find it on a treasure hunt. So uh, we don't really know where her bloodlines with the Vol align, like how common that is, or if there was any anything beyond chance that she found this blood magic that she's using now. Whereas Last to Die, very specifically, because she has the Blood Crucible and it is a pact made with Chaos and the High Priests of the Vol, she claims she is descended from those specific bloodlines. In addition, uh, she seems to understand the blood magic real good. She has a whole device, mul two devices really, that she's just ready to implant in our bodies and explain to us in very simple terms, you know, go, go murder and, and it'll work good. Whereas Alva has this kind of finicky like Oh, it has to be the stars aligning, it has to be the right time and right place to use my magic. And that's kind of, you know, lame. We don't get any cool implantables, uh, injectables from, from Alva, you know. Obviously the difference between time travel and dimension travel, you know, uh, those aren't necessarily the same thing. Uh, time and dimensions. We don't have to talk about how time is an illusion, but, uh, you know, they're, they're a little bit different. Alva also has a whole history of her being in the Oriathan Navy, um, getting kind of in trouble with Templars, being allowed to go into the Reliquarians because of her dad's connections, like this whole history of being, you know, kind of sexy and a treasure hunter. Um, whereas Last of Dice had a really hard time. She's just been fighting the Scourge most of her life, allegedly. Alva seems younger. Last of I seems older. Um, and, you know, they're very different. Like, Alva would probably be a lot of fun at a party. And then Last of I sounds like she'd be kind of a bummer. I mean, besides the injectables, which could be fun. Depends on the party, I guess. So here's some examples of Alva and Last Jedi talking about their different blood magics and the different ways that they look upon it. So Alva says that she, she just says very briefly that uh, this requires blood of the Vol. I've got some in me, you see. That's all she talks about for her bloodline. Whereas LTD says blood crucible is a pact between chaos and the bloodlines of the high priest of the Vol. That's a much more clear backstory and lineage of specific bloodlines, probably understanding her ancestry a bit better. Um, then last did I saying that I fought the most of my life um, and explaining how the crucible works. You know, you when you assault them in the ravaged lands, you absorb the corruption. Whereas Alva says these blood spells are fickle things. They must be performed under certain conditions, blah, blah, blah. So a little bit of 
a little bit of differences in terms of their experiences. However, it's important to remember that they're from different dimensions. Experiences and knowledge aren't necessarily carried over between your different alternate dimension versions of yourself. Now, let's just briefly look at kind of the differences between how incursion work versus scourge. Alva has to find these rituals and bleed on them, right? Whereas Last to Die just gives us some fun things to put directly into our body. We don't really know if it requires our blood or her blood to work. For sure, it requires blood. <laughs> it requires somebody's blood, and it's gonna take ours if it doesn't get enough other blood but it doesn't say if it requires Vol blood. Incursion is time portal, Scourge is dimension portals. I can't say that enough. It's, it's different blood magic, right? Incursion is this cool pyramid looking sign that's very, you know, pretty and, and thematic with the temple, whereas Scourge stuff just looks really icky, especially the Viscera Cauldron. Like, uh, it doesn't look like you should be putting that anywhere near your body, but it's too late. They're both inside of us. Speaking of which, uh, those can be inserted in your flesh, the scourge stuff, and the ritual altar, like, is it? But like, could it be? I don't know, it's pretty big. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't do that. Um, I apologize, that is not very professional of a doctor noodle to bring up. But as a doctor also I can say don't put that. Don't don't not insert the little points, okay? So wrapping it up here, what about chaos, right? The last to die blood crucible is related to chaos. We made a pact with the high priest of the Vol. Uh, since chaos can see all possible outcomes of any decision, of any action. I'm assuming that means Chaos is also someone who dimension shifts, right? So, Alva doesn't mention Chaos, but Incursion happened way before Ultimatum, and the Trial Master doesn't mention the last to die, but Ultimatum happened a little bit before Scourge. But if Chaos gives the last to die her specific blood power, this power of the blood crucible, what blood magic is all the use of? Like, is it tied to a different uh, god or a different entity that we've seen? Is it also part of chaos and it's like a different chaos? But I think that chaos we can assume exists as the same throughout all dimensions because he sees all of his different, you know, he sees every different option and every different outcome. Uh, and he's probably, you know, existing outside of those dimension shifts. But, Vol, they use a lot of blood stuff, okay? There, there's a lot of blood magic going on here, all right? For one thing, apparently, Adziri is like a, a constant throughout Chaos's dimensions. Every single different dimension, every single possible outcome at Ciri existed and brought about the Cataclysm. So maybe that has something to do with her blood magic that she's using, which was mostly to retain beauty and youth and power. Um, Zerfi used blood magic to be immortal. Arakali used people, uh, maybe the blood, um, to create medicines for her subjects. Zibakwa, the first fall, was born in the flesh of the gods. And Valgems all use blood and sacrifice to power their magic. That's like the whole thing of what makes a Vol gem different than a Virtue gem. So it's, they're all using, everybody's using blood. Everybody's doing blood stuff. There's bloody demons, there's bloody Vol magic, there's blood. It's just blood all the way down for forever. All the way to the first blood Vol. Okay? So, the fact that it's different blood magics, even if they're the same person, doesn't necessarily mean anything because there's so many different blood magics with the vault. They're just doing blood, everything blood. Here's just, I'm not gonna really focus on this because I, I don't wanna read, <laughs> I don't wanna read anymore, but just some examples of the different blood magics like 
uh, Ball used human sacrifice to power their empire. Blood priests were earliest intellectuals. Um, her beauty you must submit, lest your neck, the great queen. Bleh. You know, so many examples of blood magic. So finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, and I've probably figured out most of this at this point, if you're very smart like me. Um, the last to die is from another dimension, so she could be a copy of any person we've met and that currently exists on our ray class. So she cannot be somebody we've met, as in someone we've already interacted with, because she was born on and lived on an entirely different dimension. However, because of that, she can be someone that... another version of someone that we know, hence being Alpha. They're wearing the same scarf, hat, hairstyle, voiced by the same person, cannot emphasize enough, those are both two very, very compelling things to look at. Same voice, same outfit stuff, pretty wild. Now, in regards to Alva seeming younger and Last to Die seeming older, like, Last to Die says she spent her whole life fighting scourge demons, like bloody demons from another dimension, and like, maybe she's not old, maybe she's just like really tired, actually. Um, and I feel like that's fair. Like, they don't have to be a different age, which is something that I've seen before people saying that maybe it's like, future Alva or Alva when she, you know, is a lot older and it's like from our same dimension and came back, like her blood magic changed. I think it's really just like same Alva, just very tired. <laughs> um, and because of that, like if we are thinking that they're both Alva, we look at their lives, they're very different. They're in different dimensions. Their lives have just taken very different courses. Last to die doesn't get to go be a treasure hunter looking for jewelry in a cute little temple. She's been fighting blood demons. Like, she's busy. And again, ability to use ball blood stuff and the differences between those blood stuffs is due to the dimension difference, not the person difference. There's just different paths. Uh, Alva seemed to find her blood magic by chance, um, going through raiding different places for treasure and last to die probably had to get a bit more serious and and be more concerned with i don't know not dying and uh therefore we can't preclude that uh alva's bloodline isn't also the high priest of the vault in addition since alva was so added so much earlier chaos might not have even been a thought in the lore so we can't say that just because she doesn't know her history that there isn't more history to be known. And of course, in the most important takeaway from all of this, as I said in my last TED talk, I'm a genius, so trust me guys, I'm probably right. Any questions? Okay.